From East Berlin to Junction City, hello internet. My name is Marley. You can call me Marley. And this is my makeup tutorial. I'd like to place my cards on the table. I do not have even a vague semblance of a clue of what I'm doing here. I'm not what we call a makeup person. I'm not good at self-care. I don't wash my produce. Look, I like to believe that that viscous layer of pesticides will just take care of any bugs I've swallowed while walking around as the gate-mouthed idiot that I am. I'm making this video then for the only one reason I ever do anything to make a point. We'll get to that. In the spirit of cards on tables, I'll say that I am already wearing a layer of foundation because I have been socially conditioned to be uh, insecure about the texture and tone of my skin. Corporations profit off of my low self-esteem. And since I'm white and have no significant skin conditions, it's pretty easy for me to walk into a Walgreens and buy a bottle of liquid foundation in my shade for less than $10. This one is by Maybelline. Uh, I'm not born with it. It's the lightest shade in their Fit Me collection. I think it's called Porcelain, which um, is a nice way of saying that in the summertime when there's fireworks, I can like pull back my shirt a little bit and watch the neon colors refract off of my translucent flesh. Since I've never spent a lot of time or money on makeup, I ended up buying a lot of new products for this video. Uh, this is a concealer in, it's also Maybelline, it's the Fit Me collection. I figured it was a good idea to buy most of my skin makeups in the same brand. I don't know if that's a thing, um, but we're gonna give it a shot. So I'm just gonna go ahead um, and dab some of this concealer under my eyes where the where the dark patches are and along my along the view of my forehead and on any of my pimples. Um, at the tender age of 22, I do still have acne, so uh, puzzle that one out. I'm just gonna go like... I watched a few, like, real videos to prepare for this, so, um, that's not to blame anyone else for my horrible strategies. I read a chapter in a book recently by a fellow named Goldsmith. Uh, Goldsmith unpacks, um, this cultural concept we have of wasting time on the internet. Uh, he asks, what is wasting time? Was I wasting time because I should have been working? Was I wasting time because I hadn't worked enough? I had a choice not to click on things on the internet that seemed genuinely interesting to me, but I didn't make that choice. I'm gonna use this little guy now, this little sponge, to blend in my concealer. Um, the package told me, and a lot of your other videos told me to get it wet first, and that seems really counterintuitive to me because I figured the water would take off the makeup. Um, but I would like to emphasize once again that I am so not an expert until I bought this sponge I have been just smearing colors around my face with my hands like a, like a toddler in a cave Goldsmith's writing addresses what I think is the most talked about cultural anxiety in this age of tech innovations and just constant exponential innovations in the way we do and think about technology this is actually this is actually working really well it's kind of blending in and I don't even know if I'm doing it right the anxiety I'm talking about is that of the internet's effect on our cognition. Have we become more distracted? Have we become less communicative? Is the internet making us more distracted and less communicative? Essentially, has uninhibited access to an immense measure of human knowledge and activity changed my cognition for the worse? Now I'm going to start filling in and combing out my eyebrows. I do this occasionally for day-to-day -day wear, but I am very bad at it. Uh, I'm so frustrated that the that eyebrows are the thing right now. I'm really hoping the next glamour trend is like symmetrical earlobes or something. So I got that one locked and loaded. So the pencil I'm using here is um, by Elf. It's in natural brown. I like to buy Elf products when I can because they, first of all, they do not test on animals. Um, I love critters. And also, they're very inexpensive, and that is 300% the name of the game. Back to this concept of wasting time online, though. Why is it a thing, and why is it a bad thing? I don't know about the rest of you, but I am so, so tired of having older generations accuse me of having brain damage or something 
when I'm on my phone in line at the grocery store. I could be reading The New Yorker. I could be scrolling through my Twitter feed, which is one of my go-to sources for current event coverage. Or I could just be watching a video of cats who are scared of cucumbers. Search that shit on YouTube and thank me later. This is Maybelline again. It's some pressed powder that I tend to rub all around my face with the little foam pad that it came with because I have really oily skin. It really evens out the, um, the spread of my foundation, my concealer, and it helps everything stay in place without creasing for a little bit longer than usual. Goldsmith's chapter specifically mentions YouTube tutorials as something that might be seen as a waste of time. Believe me though. I watched a lot of videos from people who are actually good at makeup to prepare for this one, and I learned a lot. I learned that you can contour a nose, which is frankly wonderful information. I learned that a beautiful woman can film what is essentially 45 seconds of herself winking and posing, and I will watch that in rapturous awe. I will probably watch it on repeat. Mostly, I learned that makeup can be art. It can be an entrepreneurial venture. It can be a space of connection with people who are passionate about the thing about which you are also passionate. When I phrase it like that, it doesn't seem like a waste of time. Not even to me, not even to someone who is not at all involved in YouTubing or vlogging or my personal appearance. What Goldsmith is exposing is a paradox of attention. A paradox I've also seen explored by a writer named Tiziana Terranova. In an increasingly interlinked world, subjectivity entails paying attention. And I use the word pay in that phrase very deliberately. Attention, online and off, has been rendered a kind of capital and a kind of commodity. Attention can be seen as a relation between a subject, me, and an object this contour kit with which I am now going to do battle. Thinking of attention as a commodity can explain why we feel a sense of achievement when we gain followers or subscribers. It can help to explain the power of celebrity or the enthusiasm of fandom culture. When we waste time online, so to speak, we feel that sense of guilt because we're no longer attending or being attended to in a culturally sanctioned way. We're neither producing nor consuming in a method that serves the economy of attention. Whether I'm making this makeup tutorial or reading a webcomic, I'm operating outside of the task-oriented sector of an attention economy that depends on my ability to resist distraction. I am distracted. I'm disobeying right now my strange belief in shoulds. I should be working harder. I should be productive even when I am being consumptive. I also should be making less of a mess of this bronzer, and for that I can only apologize. Just as in an economy of money, in an economy of attention, as has been identified by Terra Nova, by Catherine Hales, by Michael Cronin, and others, commodities and capital are both necessarily scarce. I only have so much attention banked up. And that's what contributes to the rhetoric I've observed surrounding people, usually young people, whose patterns of so-called wasting time tend toward the high tech. Think about Twitter, about some egg-faced nobody shouting into the void that millennials can't possibly care about Beyonce while simultaneously at attending to, insert social issue here. Look, egg-faced nobody, if Beyonce told me to shave my head, I would do it, no hesitation. And I'm about to have a lot of fun with this eyeshadow palette. It's purple. Like most people, I become distracted by funny things, by silly things, by curious things very easily. Am I thus incapable of attending to my job? To my degree? To whatever baby boomer technophobe pundits believe I should attend? Of course not. Now, I'm gonna face God and walk backwards into hell with this mascara. Ah, my one true cosmetic Achilles heel. 
The distractions which interrupt my assembly line of attention have actually increased my ability to budget that attention. I'm able to skim an article for its main points or read that article with a deep focus. The internet and high tech have not changed my cognition because distraction is old news. I'm a natural born cyborg. My consciousness is given to adaption, to interfacing well with any new environment. I know I'm rapid firing this information cannon right now. I hope I'm sparking some itch for critical thought. And I also hope that I can put on this glitter. I'm going to do some glitter like right, right at the edge of my eye without shaming my ancestors. Ooh, now I'm ready for my pose and wink session. So fun. This is all to say that I reject the social rejection of distraction. Personal pleasures, lighthearted entertainment, and indulgence of curiosities seem to have value, even in an attending economy. I reject, too, this cultural need to convince myself that I've earned my distractions. Yeah, I embrace a social economy wherein attention is a commodity, but only to the extent that that economy doesn't exploit my attending subjectivity. Hot damn, my lips are a cha 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 cherry bomb. It's actually called Cherry Bomb. It's by Wet n Wild, and I am aware that it looks ridiculous on me. Thanks for watching. And for the love of all that is good in the world, please do not copy my makeup techniques. There are such better examples out there. And I'll get better. I'll try. I do know that there are a lot of great videos out there that can help me. Winky face! I can't wink.